Okay, hello everybody. Welcome. This will be the first video in a series of videos showcasing all the different Mortal Kombat PCBs that are out there for the arcade machines. I'm going to use our time right now to discuss and showcase them as they pertain to the original arcade hardware. I'll be discussing differences, a little background, and the hacks of each game from a hardware standpoint. I've received many, many questions over the years about information regarding these boards, so to help anyone in the future, and to help people who might be interested in purchasing an MK board for any of the different versions of Mortal Kombat, I am making this video so they know what to look for and to give them a better knowledge of how they function in a basic sense. So here we go. Here we have, for the first video, Mortal Kombat. Now I'll say, I'll just refer to it from now on as MK1. Now, when MK1 was first released in 1992, the hardware used to support the game was known as the Y unit. That's what this setup here is. This is this is the Y unit setup of Mortal Kombat 1. This hardware was used for the prototype revisions all the way up to revision 4.0. Now, this particular board is revision 4.0. Now, the way you can tell what, re what re revision these games are is on the revision ROMs. The revision ROMs are right here. It's these two ROMs right here. For the Y unit, it's U89 and U105. If we look closely here, if I can get it in frame, you see there it says L4. L4 means revision 4, 4.0. Now you'll see different labels on there, but for all intents and purposes, if it says L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, those are the different revisions. But those don't pertain to the prototype revisions. The prototype revisions, I'm not sure if they say prototype on them or not, but they're uh, the prototype versions of Mortal Kombat will be yellow labels instead of these kind of you know, light brown ones. But that's so you can tell what different revisions there are just by looking at the ROMs. So, that's how you can tell that. So, <coughs> Midway was developing newer technology, and it was shortly after the release of this current revision 4.0 that they changed over to what became known as the T-Unit. Now, the T-Unit was more reliable and better overall, and because of this changeover, shortly after Revision 4.0 was released, there were two versions of the game out in the arcades at the same time, the Y-Unit and the T-Unit versions of 4.0. That revision was released for both sets of hardware. When the 5.0 revision was released, that was reserved for the T-Unit only. If an operator wanted to upgrade to 5.0, they would have to be forced to upgrade to the T unit to do so. When the new revisions came out, operators would order them, Midway would send them, and the operator would simply remove the old revision ROMs and install the new ones. Now, I'll get to the T unit here shortly. Uh, I want to talk about the difference in the two boards here. Uh, MK1 uses separate hardware to support the audio. It is referred to as the soundboard. Now, the soundboard is located right there. The same soundboard was used for both the T-Unit and the Y-Unit main boards. It did not change when the newer T-Unit hardware was released. It connects to the main board via a power cable and a ribbon cable. You can see the power cable is right there and the ribbon cable is right there. The ribbon cable is used to transmit the data between the two boards. And the power cable is just that, supplies power to the soundboard from the main board. However, as mentioned before, there are two types of main hardware boards, the T-Unit and the Y-Unit. The power connection is different for each one. There's an extra pin on the T-Unit board. This pin is an extra ground that the Y-Unit board does not have. Now let me show you here. If you look, this is the connection right here for the sound harness to supply power to the soundboard. If you look on here, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, blank, 5, 6, 7. Now the T-Unit has 1, 2, 3, 4, blank, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's an extra pin at the end of the connector, which is just a ground. So the Y-Unit does not have that extra ground. Now, the re I gr this particular sound harness is off of a T-Unit, and I'll show I, the reason I grabbed that is to show this, uh, the differences here on the show and tell. So this here is the main connection that hooks to the main board. As you can see here, there, if you line up the blue wire on the end there with pin 1, which is right there, and I hook this up, you'll see there's an extra, it sticks out to the right. Now on the T unit, that's a ground. On the Y unit, there's nothing there. But because the, the, because the soundboard gets its ground from this pin right here, you can see it goes black, gray, black. That first black wire is a ground, so this extra ground on the end is not needed. The soundboard still functions without it. So if I hook this up here, 
There we go. So you can see it. This this is a, a sound cable for the T unit, but it still functions for the Y unit. And I'll show uh, the, the board in action later here, so you can see it, that I'm uh, not lying to you. But so this is this T unit sound cable works for the. It hooks up to the Y unit or the T unit, so it, it also works in reverse. If you happen to have a T unit main board and a Y unit sound cable, you can still use the Y unit sound cable. It's just going to be one pin short as opposed to this one being one pin long. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter which cable set you have for Y unit or T unit. It will function for either main board to run to your soundboard. Now, the other end of these cables here go to your soundboard. you got a connection here marked P6 and a connection here marked P7. And it's really, you can't screw it up. This one goes here to P6. This one here goes to P7. Then you have a connection here for your potentiometer. Now I'll get to that in a second. But as you can see here, I have the wires soldered to the posts because I don't have a connector for it. And a, a lot of times you'll, when you get a soundboard like this, it's missing the connector and you'll have to wire in your own potentiometer. As you can see here, one wire goes to the middle, the other one goes to, you can hook it up to either tang, the, the this one or that one. All it does is it just depends on if you turn it left or right to turn it up or down. So as you can see, it's soldered to pins two and four of the sound connector there. It's P5. So I'll set this back down and talk about the ribbon cable. Now the ribbon cable, there's different lengths. You'll, you'll, you'll come across all kinds of different lengths on this ribbon cable. But um, there's a line with, there's a side on here with the red line and a non-red line. It doesn't matter which way you do it. But because this transfers the data between the soundboard and the mainboard, it's very important you hook this up in, in line where it's pin one of the soundboard goes to pin one of the mainboard and pin 20 of the soundboard goes to pin 20 of the mainboard and just like that because if you take one in and turn it around the other way if it's backwards at either end it's not going to transfer the data correctly and you're not going to get any sounds so the way it works is, is I'll take the red line here and I'll hook it up to I don't know if you'll be able to see too well but uh, right there it says 2 which means the pin above it is 1 so I'll take the red line and put it on the pin 1 and pin 2 side now correspondingly on the main board at the bottom here you have a connection similar to the one on the soundboard. So we know that the red line is going to be on pins 1 and 2 which is right here pin 1 and 2 so you hook it up just like this. So th that will communicate the data between the soundboard and the main board. We have our power hooked up and our potentiometer there to give us volume for the sound. So alright so I explained all that. Now the soundboard also requires a 50k ohm variable potentiometer for volume control. And that's what this is. This is a 50 kilo ohm variable potentiometer, which is what's used to control the volume up and down. And I mentioned before, it goes to pins 2 and 4 of P5 on the soundboard for your volume. Now, as for the connections for low punch and low kick. Now, when you have this, this board installed in a machine, you've got high punch, block, and high kick are controlled through the JAMA harness here at the edge connector. You still have low punch and low kick. Now those are what's called JAMA Plus because those wires aren't in, normally included in a standard JAMA connection. Now on a Y unit it hooks to right here. This connection right here it says it's P12. Now this is a 12 pin connector. On a T unit it's a 15 pin connector so if you have a connection in your machine for a Y unit it's going to be 12 pins. If you want to put a T unit board in there you're going to have to get a different low kick low punch harness. But that this is the connection for low punch and low kick and it, the pin outs are different between Y unit and T unit. So let's see here. Alright so now let me uh, go ahead and talk about the T unit. The T unit... Hey guys sorry about that I forgot to get the board out ready to show. I only got out the Y unit and forgot to pull the T unit out. Anyway so here it is. This is the T unit version of Mortal Kombat 1. And as you can see, it's pretty different from the Y unit in the fact of size and everything. Let me place the Y unit back next to it. And you can see here how much bigger the actual T unit is compared to the Y unit. Um, and like I said, it's just a, a, the newer hardware came out and Midway wanted to increase the reliability of the hardware. So if you wanted to upgrade your Mortal Kombat machine as an operator to 5.0, you would have been forced to have to buy this new T unit because... The Y unit did not support 5.0, so 
That being said, let me show it off here. Uh, it had, I mentioned before, here is the connection for the sound cable. And let me take that off there. Now, as you can see, maybe you can't. It's a bigger board, so sorry. Everything lines up pin for pin. It doesn't stick out the end like the Y unit. Because this is a 9-pin connection, and the Y unit is an 8-pin. So when you hook up this 9-pin Molex to it, that extra ground sticks out the end. But like I said, you can use this. This is meant for a T unit, but because there's the extra ground there, the other one's right there, the black one, because this isn't really needed because it gets its ground from this one, this is kind of a, a redundant ground. So you can still use this on the Y unit or T unit. So, uh, and it works in reverse. Uh, like I said, because of redundant ground, you can use the Y unit cable on T unit, and it'll still work for your soundboard. So it doesn't matter which sound cable you have, it'll work for either, either main unit. And same goes for the ribbon cable. Just make sure, we said before that the red line is, is goes to pins 1 and 2. And the same connection down here at the bottom, 1 and 2. Make sure you have 1 and 2 lined up with 1 and 2 on the sound and the main and you're good to go. So it only has two connections for your sound cable, power cable, and for your ribbon cable for the data. Just like the Y unit. So uh, that pretty much explains both the Y unit and T unit. Now I want to take some more time here and talk about the hacks available for Mortal Kombat 1. <clears throat> so one second. No, nope, sorry about that, I lied to you. I want to talk about the prototype version of Mortal Kombat 1 before I talk about the hacks. Now, this is a Y unit as well. This is what's known as the prototype board compared to this one here is the more mainstream Y unit. The prototype Y unit, you can see, has this yellow wire running in between the RAM chips up to the top of the board and over to the edge over here where it says J5. You can see right there. That wire runs from there all the way across, down through the middle, and over here down to the bottom. Now that's a dead giveaway for a prototype main board Y unit. If you're in the market for a Mortal Kombat 1 PCB and you come across this board, it's not really more valuable or, or collectible. It may be more collectible because of how somewhat rare they are, but this is what's known as the prototype Y unit because of that, that wire, that yellow wire, because later on as you can see, that yellow wire is not on the, the more mainstream version. So I wanted to point that out. Plus the dip switches are different. These dip switches are rocker dip switches as opposed to the mainstream one has actual toggle on and off dip switches. Otherwise, the boards are pretty much the same. So I wanted to point that out before I start talking about the hacks. Now, the hacks of Mortal Kombat 1, let me go back on the script here. Here is an, a third Y unit with the combo board installed. Now for those of you who don't know, back in 2009 I found an auction for an MK1 main board that had a weird setup slash daughter board installed on the revision ROM area. I didn't know what it was and I couldn't find any info on it so I bought it not knowing what it was. It turned out to be what's known as the Turbo Ninja Hack. There are actually two different versions of this combo board known to exist. These hacks were allegedly done by a company called ComboSoft. There are a lot of these hacks floating around out there. So far, the discovered ones are Turbo Ninja, 3.1 Turbo, Nifty Combo, Nifty Combo XXX, and Nifty Combo 666. Most all of them are available in MAME. I personally sent in my combo board and ROMs to the MAME developers so they could crack the security on the combo board and make the Turbo Ninja version available for the entire Mortal Kombat community. They used that knowledge to do the same for the other hacks without needing the combo board. So, that being said, if you look here, this is what I'm talking about here on the combo board. This is actually a little daughter card. You can see there it says nibble board. Maybe you can't. Yeah, nibble board. You have a clock crystal and a, and a gal security chip. And if you look here, it simply mounts in there where the revision ROM would go, and the revision ROM mounts on top. Now, without this Without this uh, nibble board, you're not able to play the hack on real hardware. That is, until, or you were not you were not able to. When, if you wanted to play the hack, you had to have the nibble board. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Well, because I sent this in to the MAME developers, they were able to crack this security chip and bypass the clock crystal, and they were able to use, well, their brilliance to uh, emulate the function of these guys to where you now no longer need this board to play the hacks. It's, you just download the hacks and burn them onto your ROMs and put them in your board and you're good to go. So, but I do ha I do have this and I'm going to keep this for quite a while because of how rare they are. So, um, 
I'm not going to showcase the hacks because this is just more a technical video on the differences between all the PCBs and how everything looks and how they hook up and some little bit of background. But um, that's what this is. If you guys ever come across an auction or someone's selling a Mortal Kombat board with this little daughter board, snatch that guy up because these are, are getting rarer by the day. Um, and that pretty much wraps up the video. Uh, I think I mentioned at the beginning I was going to do some gameplay. But you guys get the general idea of how everything hooks up and there's not really any need for me to actually play the game so if you guys have any questions let me know uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while I know sometimes I talk fast and I may go over your head uh, and hard to follow but hopefully you get the gist of what I'm trying to put out there and if you have any questions please feel free to ask because that's what I'm here for to try and help you guys out I don't know everything but I've been dealing with mostly Mortal Kombat for the last uh, I don't know 14 years or so so let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching. And stay tuned for the rest of the series because I'm going to start with Mortal Kombat 2. Next video will be Mortal Kombat 2, and then Mortal Kombat 3, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, and Mortal Kombat 4, finally. So stay tuned for all those, and uh, again, any questions, feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.